Let's talk about the rear photo port of the Mead ETX telescopes. Now traditionally, if you want to take a picture through the telescope, you attach with a eyepiece adapter, something like that. Now in the Mead telescopes, they have a small mirror that's down here, and if you flip these guys, you can flip that mirror out of the way, and then the light from the optical tube, instead of coming out the eyepiece on the top, will come out this port on the back, which has a metal cap, it's a metal port, very nicely made, um, and so you'd have to attach your camera to here, but it's not quite the same as a standard eyepiece. Um, as a matter of fact, it's a 1.375 inch, 24 threads per inch threading on this guy. And if you've ever ridden a bicycle, that might sound familiar, because that's the exact same size and threading as our mini bicycle hubs. I kind of expect that maybe back in the day, somebody was looking to get these parts manufactured, and some shop that was set up to make bicycle hubs said, hey, we can make them this size really cheap, because we have all this machinery already set up. So if you're trying to attach something here non-standard, you can buy for six bucks just a, a 44 millimeter, and that's the size of the holes here. Um, this is a hub, kind of a, a brake rotor hub adapter, and it'll screw on there, and then you can either 3D print or JB weld or whatever you want to do attached to this thing to build off whatever you want. This particular port size is found on all of the classic Mead telescopes, 60, 70, 80, and then the 90, 105, 125s. The Mead Observer telescopes, however, had a different size. You can also find this threading on a few of the Celestron, like the Nexstar 4Es. Now, if you don't want to make your own, they do sell a T adapter for this. And so this will convert that 1.375, 24 threads per inch into a standard T or T2 thread, which is the um, 42 millimeter by 0 0.75. And that's a very common threading for astronomy equipment. Um, so, for example, I have a, a teleconverter here that is set up for the T2 threading, you know, so that can just screw right on here. Now, the only kind of downside of that is because you're screwing it on, when you attach your camera to this, you have to just keep screwing, and wherever your camera ends up is the orientation. So here I'm upside down. Um, so I typically leave it just slightly loose and hold my camera with gravity this way, so at least I have kind of a vertical orientation. Um, so that's how you use the rear camera port there. Um, one obvious downside to having it sticking out the rear is that you have a certain amount of play. So this will only go down to about 45 degrees before my camera starts hitting the base. Um, so in general, I find myself using the eyepiece for most of this. Now the advantage of using the rear camera port is that you're taking one mirror out of the optical path, so that's obviously giving you slightly more light. And also, if your camera's oriented correctly this way, the image is upright for your camera because of the number of mirrors in the system and so forth. Whereas if you put your camera in here, there's one extra mirror in the system, it's upside down. I mean, obviously you correct for that later in post-processing but it is kind of nice to have the image correctly aligned. Um, so this is useful if you want to use this optical tube as a telescopic lens on a camera. Um, it's a little bit less useful for astronomy unless you're shooting targets that are closer to the horizon.